Christine Malone with TMC Media, sitting here today with Kung JJ at the Kiz Daniel show in Melbourne. He is going to be one of the performances before Kiz Daniel goes on stage. But before that, he has agreed to sit down with us and tell him, um, tell us his story. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about who you are, like your background, where you're from. I want to hear about your journey up to where you are now. Yeah, my name is Kang JJ. Uh, I'm originally from South Sudan and I've been here for like three years now. I live here now in Australia. I'm a husband to a beautiful young lady, uh, a father to two gorgeous girls. Yeah. How old are they? The first one is now nine. Yeah. The other one is uh, going to the seventh. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also a father to two uh, great boys. Yeah. Yeah. Four kids. Yeah. Four, uh, four, four years. years. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> I'm impressed with that. <laughs> a yeah. lot of juggle. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a musician. Uh, I do Afro bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Afro pop, actually. Great. Yeah. So you moved to Melbourne from South Sudan yeah. three years ago, three years and ago. that was to get your family out of South Sudan, I'm assuming, for a better future for your children. Yes, uh, I do a little bit of artism yep. with music uh, and uh, you might know through the news recently my country has been in turmoil and uh, um, I've been very vocal to some of the things that are affecting the come on man and uh, that somehow put me on a spotlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A good spotlight or a bad, bad spotlight? One. So did you have to get out of South Sudan for safety? South Sudan and Australia embraced and took me. Yeah. 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 So I've been here since. Yeah. Yeah. And how was it moving country and moving your family? Uh, my country is still back home. They are still in Kenya. I, as When war broke out in the country, we fled to Kenya. And that's where they, that's where they are up to now. Your wife and your kids, my wife and my kids yeah. are still in Kenya. Yes. Okay. And yeah. you are in Australia by yourself. Yes. I'm by that, myself. That must be really hard not to see <laughs> them. It's not easy. It's not easy, you know, as a family man, being away from your wife, being away from your kids. That's that's the worst that every father should go through. Yeah. Will you be able to bring them over here soon? Yes, I'm working on that now. Yeah, they have to be here with me. Yeah. So while you've been in Australia, um, you mentioned before the interview you were working in the mines and now you just have a certificate in yes. disability? Yes. When I came here, the first job that I got was mining. I started working in the mining. I worked in the mining for uh, two years. And uh, then later on, I, I stopped and started taking courses of disability. I felt like it would be more... Uh, empowering if I can be able to help people, deal directly with people and help them. I, I felt like I would find more joy in that. So I decided to go and study. And uh, yes, now I'm doing disability. Yeah. And what was it like working in the mines? Were you in Western Australia? Yeah, I was in Western Australia. Yeah, it was not easy. Uh, but a job is a job. And if, if you love what you're doing, you do it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about your music now. How did you and when did you first get into music and Afrobeats? I first got into music uh, somewhere back in 2003. I, that's when I started recording, but I wasn't known and I have not performed from that time until 2006. Mm -hmm. In 2006, that, that was the first time I went to stage in Ethiopia because uh, I went to school in Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah, so... And how did you get into music? What was the journey there? Well, growing up as a child, I grew up in church. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember being a Sunday school uh, because of my vocal. They decided that I should be in the choirs, even though I was still small. Yeah. But they took me to be a lead in the choir. Yeah, so that's 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 how I grew up in music, and then later on, I just I shift to secular music and decided to write songs. Yeah. So yeah. So moving to Australia by yourself, you wouldn't have known too many people. How did you get back up into music over here? How did you make those connections? Oh yes, yeah. Um, it was challenging at first, but uh, 
my first time to be in Australia was actually in 2012. I was brought here, I performed, and I went back home. I was brought here again in 2015, I performed, and I went back home. And who brought you here? I was brought by uh, a company called the, the Triple, uh, three, three, uh, Triple Entertainment. Okay. Yeah. So they were the one who brought me here for, for the tour. Yeah. Yeah. And who um, are you with now? What, uh, are you with certain promoters or an agency now? Yes. Currently, I'm working with Music in Exile. Uh, <clears throat> when I came here, I talked to people, the, those who knows. They said, well, do you need to check with the Music in Exile? And yep. they look for talent. And they get, I got connected. Yeah. And that's how we recently started working with the, the Music in Exile. Mm -hmm. They have just released all my music on all platforms. Yeah. Yeah. And from talking a bit more about money in the music industry, you go to them to, to get help with promotion and concerts. What is the cut between, like you don't have to say exact figures, but it's just more for artists out there that are trying to do it themselves or trying to get some help. How do they help and what's the cut in that? Um, well, um, <clears throat> you know, mo most music musicians right now, recently they decide to go uh, uh, so individual right. solo musicians. And I would have done that, but I thought, no, if you really want to get into the entertainment industry, I thought it would be good to work with people mm -hmm. and uh, you will have a big exposure with audience and you will reach wherever you want to reach. So that's why I love to work with the music in exile. Uh, it's, I believe it is normally a 50-50 or 70-30 yeah. kind of deals yeah. that you get out there, which is very fine with me mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, you have the intellectual property, but without the help from hands around you, there's nothing much you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a one man show. <laughs> no. And any stage in life, anywhere you are, the more relationships you have in life, the easier life is. And the more connections you have in the music industry, the easier it is. So going with an agency, they um, connect you to the promoters, to the concerts. Yes. So as much as it's great going solo, mm -hmm. it might just take a little bit longer. And at the end of the day, you end up with an agency. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an agency. Yeah. And now recently, uh, that's how I got connected with the with the Prince Entertainment, and yes. that's why I'm here. We love Prince Entertainment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to them. They yeah. are doing actually a great, great, great job. They are uh, yeah. making sure that you know, especially come out from the COVID nineteen, it has been hectic, mm -hmm. and for a group of people to put things like this together, they deserve Good. a shout out. Yeah. And you write your own music, is that yes, correct? I do. And how, what kind of music do you enjoy writing and where do you get your inspiration from? Um, I first started listening to uh, music uh, from those of Bob Marley, uh, those of uh, Shania Twain, yeah. those of Celine Dion. Oh, Shania Twain's there. there you go. <laughs> yes, yes. I got, got inspiration from so many musicians, those of any Iglesiastes. Yeah. Yeah. I, love music that have meaning. Don Williams, Kenny Rogers. Yeah. I love music that has meaning. That music that is full of love. As a story. Yes, and a story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and to any young um, up and coming artists, can you, do you have any advice to them? Um, I mean, obviously we want them to keep going and don't give up, but any other advice that you've lived through? I personally have been on and off in music and uh, the drive is if you know that's what you love, you have to do it. Yeah. Fall but rise, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Keep rising, however, you, whenever you fall, just keep rising and keep doing it. And with time, time is a good friend, you know, with time, things, great things happen. Mm -hmm. And the other things I would also uh, like to say to also the other musicians is that uh, talent without character, it does not go anywhere. You can do all the right things, <laughs> sing all the right keys, but if you don't have you don't something... Have character, you won't be able even to work with people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the interesting, you say working with people. 
Um, any advice on that? As you get more popular and all people want to work with you, what's your advice on how to handle that and how to work with stay people? Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay focused to what you do. Put more energy in it yeah. and you'll be all good. Yeah. And when you have to bring people into your circle to help you, how do you know that they're the people to trust and they're not just around you for your growth? Well, that is not easy. Uh, but I always believe that if you don't have any bad intention, good things also will come your way. Yeah. yeah. As soft as you are, as honest as you are, people will see. And anyone who would want to do good things will find you. Yeah. Yeah. And then just, I'm just going to circle back around to the beginning of this interview where you mentioned you, um, you're an activist in your country. Are you still voicing your opinion about what's happening in yes. South Sudan? Yes. Uh, if Like mostly what I do is encouragement. You know, when you see things that should not be happening, you say why they shouldn't be happening. And it's not everyone that is going to be happy about that. Yeah. Uh, yes, because... In this world, we have those who enjoy doing things that not everyone enjoys. But we also have those who just, just want to live their life. And uh, with a simple act, you can prevent everyone to do what they would love to do. And that's why we have so many refugee camps nowadays. Uh, uh, just a small act of someone who doesn't have good intentions with others, for others. So... And I believe that, you know, with love, this world is big, it's too big, it, it accommodates everyone. Yeah. yeah. If love only love. we love each other, everyone can live. Yeah. yeah. Love it. There would be no refugee camps, no detention camps, no nothing. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Well, I really hope that you rise with fame and you can spread the word around the world larger. Um, it's been great speaking with you and we're really excited to see you on stage thank tonight. You so, so thank you so much. Appreciate really thank appreciate you. it. Yo, this is Kang JJ all the way from South Sudan and living in Australia now. It's going down tonight uh, with a great work put together by Prince Entertainment. And shout out to TMC. One love for all Afro music. Thank you so much.